Hi and welcome to this lesson. This time we're looking at linear solving linear equations. Okay, so we've already looked at what is a linear equation and we saw it is something that has a left hand side equal to a right hand side. The whole idea is that these two sides are in a balance. They one of them or both of them has some unknown value, let's say um, x is unknown, and we want to know what must that unknown value be? What value can it take for these two sides to be in a balance, to be equal to each other? And uh, we saw that well, that solution there can be one solution, then it can be two solutions, there can be many solutions, there can be infinitely many solutions, and there can even be no solutions. It might have no solutions, but nevertheless, we are looking at linear equations, and linear equations um, have the following property: a linear equation will always have constant terms. and unknowns unknowns to the power of one okay if it has an un well it should have at least one unknown and the highest exponent of that unknown would be to the power of one so for example 2x minus 1 is equal to 4x plus 7 so here you can see I've got a term okay so and this term has an unknown, a x to the power of 1, okay, it's got a constant term, a negative 1, then it's got another term with an x in it, but its x exponent is 1, and then it's got a plus 7 term in it as well, okay, and this is a linear equation, they are fairly easy to solve, um, although it can get a little bit tricky, and we'll see if we can in this video just give you the basics of how would I go about solving a linear equation well let's start with something simple let's say I have a constant multiplying an unknown equal to a different constant okay so C and K would be numbers let me give you an example if I said 2x is equal to 10 here you can see this format a coefficient uh, um, multiplying the x equals to an, a constant. Now this coefficient tells me how many x's I'm working with. So I've got two x's and the value of two x's is equal to 10. So it's quite simple to say well that's easy then x each x must be equal to 5. I think it's easy for us to find that because we know that 2 times 5 is equal to 10. But what if it was a little bit more difficult, like 9x is equal to 413, okay? So how would I know what value I must multiply with, 9 with, to get 413? Well, what, what is actually easy to understand is that if 2x is equal to 10, then to get 1x, I have to divide with a 2. I have to get rid of this coefficient by dividing it on both sides. Now, if I do something on one side, I have to do it on the other side because I want to keep the balance. So if I half the one side, I have to half the other side, okay? Which leaves me with x is equal to 5. So this one would be 9 divided, 9 goes into 9, and this one side I also have to divide with 9 so x is equal to and now you can use your calculator if you want uh, so we've got 4 1 3 divided by 9 is equal to 45.89 so roughly equal to 40 was it 45 comma 89 okay now you wouldn't have been able to do that if you didn't know that to get rid of this coefficient you have to divide it away on both sides so basically what I say is that well the C is multiplying the X I want X on its own so I have to divide this expression or this term with C but what I do on the one side I have to do on the other side so I have to I divided the whole left hand side with a C so I have to divide the whole right hand side with a C and that ends up giving me K is X is equal to whatever my constant was on the right hand side divided by the coefficient of the X Now don't go and memorize this just rem just remember 
when I have a coefficient for the x to get rid of that coefficient since it's multiplying the x I just divide it away so just do the opposite to get x on its own okay so let's look at another type of expression let's say I've got x and this time I'm adding or I'm subtracting some sort of constant and I'm getting a different value so again an example would be like x plus 3 is equal to 10 and this one is actually very easy because we know that 7 plus 3 is equal to 10 so our mind has has recorded this somewhere so that we immediately recognize that well if I replace x with a 7 I'll get 10 so we know x is equal to 10 but again what if it's more difficult what if it's like uh, x plus 314 is equal to 704 okay now it's not so easy and you actually have to do a little bit of a calculation what must I have so that if I add 314 I'll get 704 well it's actually easy because if if 7 plus 3 gives me 10 if something plus 3 gives me 10 it means if I take this one and I subtract what I'm adding I should get what I've what I've added or what I had initially so in other words to get X on its own I see I'm adding 3 to X but I don't want to so I should subtract 3 from from this left hand side but what I do on the one side I must do on the other side so I'm adding a term so to get rid of that term I should subtract that term but I do it on both sides that will get it rid on this side and on the other side I'll have 10 minus uh, 3 that's not to the power by the way okay this is subtracting it on the left hand side so I'm left with X on the right hand side 10 minus 3 gives me 7 okay oh, I kept doing this okay we know that X is equal to 7 now how about this one well again I'm adding 314 so X plus 314 to get rid of the 314 I subtract 314 and I do this on both sides so 704 minus 314 so we notice that on the right hand side sorry left hand side 314 minus 314 is 0 they cancel each other out to leave me just with the X and that's what I want to do I want to get X on its own with just the coefficient of 1 in front and the right hand side well that's just a normal calculation uh, 4 gives me 390 so 390 that's what X should be so that if I add 314 I get 704 okay now what about if it was negative well the same thing if it was a X minus 2 equal to something like 14 then I can see well this time I'm subtracting a term from X so to get X on its own I should add that term so that they can cancel but I do this on both sides okay so on the right hand left hand side the negative 2 and the plus 2 uh, cancels each other out and I'm left with X is equal to 16 wonderful so what is the conclusion we can make well the conclusion I'd like to make is that in order to solve this I would take X plus minus C what if if the constant is added or subtracted okay then I'll just do the opposite I'll sub sorry I'll subtract it or add it okay and that will cancel it and on the other side the constant will also just we'll do the same thing on both sides we'll subtract or add it depending on what we did on this side we'll do the exact same on that side so in the end I'll just have this my constant minus plus my constant that was on the other side again please don't go and remember this go and remember the principle okay and I'll summarize the principle in just a minute again okay so what if we have something like X and it's now being divided so I'm now dividing with a certain constant and then getting another constant and well let's look at an example that might help understand so if I have something like X divided by 2 is equal to 10 
then kind of what I'm saying is half of x is equal to 10. And But I don't want to work with a half x. I want to work with 1x. I want my coefficient to just be 1. So what do I do with a half to get 1? Well, I take two of them. Two halves would give me 1. Okay. And since I multiplied the left-hand side with a 2, I should also multiply the right-hand side with a 2, which says that x is equal to 20. Why do I say x? Because the 2's can cancel one another to leave me with just one x. On the right-hand side, though, 10 times 2 is 20. Now, 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. That's what we had in the beginning, so we did get the right answer. Now, will this... Will this work if I say x divided by 5 is equal to 70? Okay, so again, x, I'm working with a fifth of x. x has been divided into five pieces and I'm working with one of them. So in order to find out how much is one, a whole x worth, okay, I have to multiply with a 5 since I am dividing with a 5. So that cancels it on this side, but I must also multiply the other side with a 5, which gives me 350. So 1x would be 350, so that a fifth of that, if I divide it with 5, both sides I get 70. Okay, now, so what does that mean? How do I solve this? Well, it's simple. I just multiply with a reciprocal, because that cancels the denominator. Multiplying with c over 1 on both sides which multiplying with c over 1 is just like the same multiplying just with c so okay it cancels it on the left hand side so I'm left with x and on the right hand side I've got k times c simple so here's the here's the summary do the opposite. That's it. Just do the opposite. So, if I am multiplying with a constant, I will divide with that constant. And if I'm dividing with the constant, I will multiply with the constant. If I'm adding a constant, I will just subtract that constant. If I am subtracting the constant, I'll just add the constant. So it works both ways. And this is really all you have to remember in order to be able to solve linear equations. Well, maybe not. There's another thing I want to tell you, but I'll tell you that in the next video where we'll be looking at how about if I am multiplying with a constant, dividing with something else, and then going and adding another constant and finally getting an answer out of all that. Okay, how do I do it when it's all mixed up? Well, I'll show you in the next video. I'll see you there.